it's Saturday, uh, March 21st, and today I am 35 weeks pregnant. As you can see, I'm already rocking my new nursing bras. They're the same brand that I got um, for my last pregnancy, but I wore them so much that I ordered a bunch of new ones because they were just so worn out. Here's this belly. Here with my computer. Of course, we're all stuck at home, so normally on Saturday, I head to Starbucks and um, enter a bunch of workouts, and that's not an option, so I'll be doing it from my little home office. Over here, it's like a folding table. Because our downstairs is still a disaster. Um, feeling pretty good. I already ate breakfast, so I, and I didn't weigh myself before because I wasn't thinking, so I'll have to weigh myself tomorrow. But um, I can't believe we only have five weeks left. Four to seven weeks is what we'll say. Uh, and this week we'll be talking about whether or not we're going to go through with this new home birth idea. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this week on the pregnancy vlog, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, making the transition after my decision to do a home birth and also just some of the stuff that came up with finishing the renovation of our house with all this social distancing and stay home stuff as well as just how I'm feeling about all of it. And I mean, I'm almost, or I am 36 weeks pregnant, so how it's all going so far. All right, it's um, Sunday still, and I wanted to work out today, so I'm gonna modify the street parking sandbag workout. It's supposed to be an 800 meter burden run, so carrying the sandbag run 800 meters. Um, <laughs> Knox is just over here learning how to skateboard. Uh, and then some sandbag slams, some sandbag step up overs, and then another run, something like that. So I'll probably do the slams and the step up overs, um, and I'm just gonna do a 400 meter walk, carrying the sandbag at the beginning and the end instead of the 800 meter run. So last week I did, it seems like, actually I think when they came, was it two weeks ago? I don't, the days, if you guys know, they're running together at this point, but um, after I had met with the, th the three midwives, one in person and then two over like a phone call or a Zoom call, um, I had my doula reach out to them because I mean, I could tell that they were nice people, but I don't really know how to tell if they're, good midwives, I guess. Um, so my doula, Erica, uh, she reached out and I don't know what she asked them. I don't know how she figured it out, but she interviewed all of them. And the one that came here um, that I also really liked, Naomi, she said that um, her text to me was, Naomi's making me want to have another baby. So <laughs> she loved her as well and uh, said that she felt really good about either one of the ones that were available, um, but that if I felt comfortable with Naomi, um, that I should go for it and that she thought that she would do a great job also. So that gave me peace of mind and we let Naomi know and luckily um, she was able to take me on. So she will only take three people a month and she um, already had two and obviously she's getting a lot of people reaching out to her. So. Um, I was really lucky to do that. And then this week, it's been a process of like, I have told her that I've had a perfectly healthy pregnancy and I have no issues, but that's just, she would have to take my word for it. So this week has been me getting all of my records over to her and her being able to look at it and me being like nervous, like, oh man, was there, I mean, I'm pretty sure I've had no issues this whole time, but it's maybe for home birth it's different and the requirements are different, so I was a little nervous. She came over here today, um, and I and I feel bad for her too because like even she like was wearing a mask and she's like, I'm sorry, it's so awkward and this is not how I like it to be. I like it to be hugs and personal and everything. And we sat in here and talked and she sat like on the appropriate distance away from me and. She needed to look at the records that I have on my phone and she had to put gloves on so that she could touch my phone and everything. And you know, you can tell, I mean, someone that is a midwife does that because they want to be like 
a part of this person's like journey and emotionally connected and it's hard when there's like all that stuff. What's up guys, it's um, Tuesday, <laughs> April 24th, March 24th. I just finished dinner, it's like 9 p.m. I'm still having a really hard time um, eating at night. I'm just not hungry. Um, but one of my concerns that I've had right now is that I haven't gained any weight for two weeks. <clears throat> and I know weight gain toward the end of your pregnancy tends to slow down a little bit. Um, but you know, I want to make sure that I'm taking care of him and that I'm ready to produce milk and all of that stuff. Um, I was super lean when I, when I got pregnant. And so I feel like being up only 24 ish pounds, um, where I gained more like 32 to 33 with Knox. Um, I'm just a little concerned about it. Um, and I, and I know I've missed dinner a few times and I definitely don't eat as many calories, not on purpose, but just because we are <clears throat> not eating out at all. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to add more fat into my meals um, and trying to add in like the piece of toast at night that I know I did when I was pregnant with Knox. Um, and I did earlier in this pregnancy too. Um, and we have like four and a half weeks left. So I won't be surprised if I don't gain too much again this week. Again, like we just eat so clean um, that it's not a ton of calories, but I'm just trying to make sure that I at least get my meals. I might even like, I just finished dinner, but I might even make like a little protein shake with my toast and just load it with almond butter um, just to feed this little guy. Um, feeling super uh, relieved and calm and just excited about this home birth idea and um, yeah, but that's what's up. That's like a, like a main thought that I have in my mind right now and um, we'll keep you updated. Yeah, so um, I haven't been going to the office uh, this week because I've been staying home and staying safe. Um, this is my office here at my house, which literally two days ago was still covered in like plastic and like paper and everything. Um, and they got, so on Monday here where we live in Washington, um, they put out the order for everyone to stay home, like mandatory stay home unless you work for an essential business or you're going out to get groceries or whatever. Um, and then on Wednesday, the first person that we called was our contractor because our house was still just a disaster. Like it was still just covered in plastic and there was like countertops missing and light fixtures weren't up and like light switches weren't working yet and we still don't have a washer and dryer down here. Um, there are no blinds in our house. We're planning on having a home birth. So the first person that we called was our contract and we were like, oh my gosh, can you guys still come to our house to, to work? And he, on Monday, he said, yes, we're, we looked into it. We're still considered essential, construction's essential. So you guys are fine and we're like, thank goodness. Um, not that we want a bunch of people traipsing through our house, but at the same time, we have to live here and who knows how long this whole thing is going to go. So we just need to get it done at this point. Um, but then on Wednesday, they called us and said, Hey, uh, we've been updated and construction is considered essential, but home renovation is not. Our home renovation is no longer essential, which, um, means that they can't come work out much anymore. Um, yesterday, our house was still a complete disaster with plastic walls everywhere. Um, the floors were covered, dust everywhere, doors not on, just our whole downstairs was still a huge mess. Um, the guys were able to come over today for one more day and clean up and just do as much as they possibly can so that we can have a functioning home that we're able to actually clean before doing a home birth and having a newborn baby here. Um, we're still missing some countertops. We're still missing some uh, light fixtures and some like electrical and some tiling. But uh, let me show you what it looks like now. And honestly, it's easing a lot of anxiety that they at least took the dang plastic walls down. 
All right, so here's our laundry room. So we still don't have countertops, but uh, the washer and dryer will come on Tuesday. And there's a bathroom in here that's also, thank goodness we have a toilet, but still no countertops, no sink, no tile or mirror or um, electrical. But they took the plastic walls down, which have been here for two months. They took the plastic wall down. Those fixtures right there still need to be replaced, but it's finally like back up and open. They finished the breakfast nook, which is just awesome. And they're just cleaning up a lot of stuff that they can today. We're gonna have to store some stuff in here. This is the school room. and my office, which I'm so excited about. So, still got some paper and stuff on the floor, but I think we're gonna clean that up today. And definitely looking a lot better than it was. So one of the things I've been doing um, every day since I've been working from home uh, and working out a little bit less is just going for about, I don't know how long it is, it's at least a mile walk every day through my neighborhood, sometimes with my dog, sometimes alone. Um, I know that walking is really good to help get the baby in the right position and also just to get out of my house. Um, so. Hasn't been too bad of weather here this week. It's been a little bit rainy and obviously you can see it's a little bit cloudy, but um, I found a playlist like on Spotify, like a birth playlist that I've been listening to. I forgot my pods today, but uh, just trying to stay sane over here. This person's gonna think I'm insane. Um, and keep my mind focused on baby B and our family and not all this craziness that's going on in the world. I'm feeling really good about the decision for the home birth and now it's just like, I've lost a lot of the anxiety that I've had and now it's just keeping myself healthy. Again, I don't feel that I'm um, in a group where if I did catch the coronavirus that I would get super sick, but I would not be able to have him at home if that was the case. They would definitely make me have him at the hospital. So just keeping all of that so that we can be here and be home and be not separated from each other. Um, yeah, so it's really crazy. Knox has started talking about Baby B more and he doesn't call him Baby B, he calls him by his name, but I'm not quite ready to share with you guys what that is yet. Um, but he like talks to him and be like, it's okay, and he like jumps on him and hugs him, and every morning he's like, good morning. He's like, it's okay, it'll be okay, and then he tells people that he's coming soon, and he says this is his bedroom, and this is his. these are his clothes, because I bought like some new baby clothes, like, I mean, and yeah, he tells people he's coming out soon, baby be coming soon. Um, when Knox, Knox has gotten into a singing phase, like big time, at night, he uh, sings Small World and he sings songs from Frozen and he sings like just these Disney songs that I sing to him and um, Baby B moves around a ton when he's doing that. It's just, uh, I'm really interested to see when he sees that the, this human being now that I'm like holding when he's like, if, if it's like, oh yeah, I knew this was gonna happen or if he's like confused by it. I'm really interested, but um, yeah, I'm super excited. He He's excited to have our house back and everything too. Um, he was riding his little scooter around our house today and um, it feels more like our home that we can actually see our family of four being in now. So it's good. Yeah, so this week I've done, let's see, I think I've worked out four times this week so far. It's Friday right now. Um, super scaled, it's just to move at this point. It's a lot of like 
psychological well-being um, and just getting my heart rate up a little bit, sweating a little bit, feeling it's one thing that can feel normal to me when the world's different than it normally is and my body's different than it normally is and our house was different than it normally is. So it's just like the one constant for me. So um, I've been doing the workouts. I've been pretty much straight up just doing shift except for the other day I did program A and the only thing that I changed was the, I did dumbbell hop overs, like skip overs instead of double unders and I beat Salvi. So we'll just make sure that video ends up in here. <laughs> Salvi was like, what the heck? Um, but no, my body still feels really good and I have been going to the chiropractor um, still. So with him, not being in the best position at least a couple weeks ago. Um, Webster Chiropractic, I don't want to like act like I know a lot about it, but I know it's a certain type of chiropractic adjustment that al aligns your pelvis so that the baby can have room and will find his way, his or her way to that good position. Um, and I think just that combined with probably some of the other random things that I did, he is in a good position now, but now it's about... Um, making sure that I stay in a good alignment so that when I do go into labor, it's not as uncomfortable. I mean, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but um, the more you can be like properly aligned and the baby in a good position and all that, the easier the labor should be. So I still have been seeing her. Uh, she had to shut down her office, but she is gonna see her um, super pregnant patient still. So she said that she would just call me um, and still try to get me in twice next week because um, she knows how important those adjustments can be to helping you in your labor and making sure things just go smoother. So um, yeah, I'll see how that goes next week and I'll see if I hear from her and otherwise I'm just continuing to stretch and do all the things that her and the doula have told me to do. Another moment um, or a few moments I should say that I've had this week is I, um, I started searching on Spotify for like a like a birth playlist because you know you gotta get the vibes and um, I'll have to show you which one it is so you can put it on the video. But I found this like nine and a half hour long playlist and I started listening to it like when I go for my walks at night or when I'm in the bathtub and it's chill like ac acoustic music. Some of it's like popular songs that have been made into acoustic versions or songs that I've never heard before, or just chill songs. Um, but I was telling Julian when I was in the bath the other night and listening to it just in my pods and he came in and I was like crying. He was like, what, why are you crying? And I was like, I can just feel that he's coming soon. And he was like, you mean like, because of the position he's in? And I'm like, no, like he's, his soul is telling my soul that he's like getting ready to come. And it's something you can't explain that to someone who's never had a baby before, or even somebody who just hasn't taken the time to be in tune with their baby like that. Um, it's been really special and I've felt really a lot more connected to him and this whole process since we've decided to do it at home. Uh, so yeah. So, I mean, this is obviously just a super stressful time for every human being, literally on planet Earth. Um, let alone pregnant moms who that's already hard for us anyway there's so much for us to think about and worry about and um the things that have really helped me are um talking about it with with julian not talking about stress and like i'm worried about this and i'm worried about that and like listing it and researching it because that's normally what i do and i've really tried to stay away from that uh quite a bit actually i check like the stats every day and then that's it that I don't read opinions and articles and all this stuff um, but the walks have helped a lot like especially with the more usually on walks I'll listen to like a book or like a podcast that'll like motivate me for our business or whatever but I've only been listening to the birth playlist um, on my walks and I've taken like I've been in the bathtub every night for probably like an hour and it's kind of cool because that's where he will be born. And so just like connecting with that space and the music has really helped me um, a ton. And then honestly, to turn my brain off at night, I've watched some really 
cheesy Netflix shows um, that just allow me not to think about work or birth or the coronavirus and just it's just kind of like trashy TV to be honest but it, it takes you away from it and I think that's okay I think that's like as long as you're not doing that all day long um, I think it's okay to find something like that that can just take your mind off of everything